Hi guys, Yvette Carroll speaking. Now just a warning with this one. It's another great Kiwi author, my friend, Melinda Sharmanik's great story. Won awards here in New Zealand, The Wernanna. This is not a bedtime story. It's actually quite a scary one. So it's just a warning. The Wernanna. For Stella Rosa's older brother Simon, there was no better fun than scaring his sister. Sometimes it was shouting BOO when she least expected it. Sometimes it was putting a spider on her plate. But Simon's favourite way to frighten his sister was to tell her a scary story. Today Stella Rosa was frightened. Her nana Lupin was flying in from a faraway country and Stella Rosa's family was going to the airport to pick her up. Stella Rosa had never met Nana Lupin before, but she knew her voice sounded horribly hollow and hard to understand when she spoke on the phone. And she knew Nana Lupin looked scary in her big black coat she wore in all her photos. Stella Rosa did not want to meet spooky old Nana Lupin. Stella Rosa already felt nervous, so she did not ignore her brother, as she should have, when he sat close to her in the car and began to speak into her ear. She has whiskers, Simon said, as they pulled out of the driveway. They scratch your skin when she hugs you. She has long, sharp fingernails, he said, as they drove along the motorway, like claws. They dig into you when she pulls you close. And don't think for one minute she'll be arriving on a plane. She rides on a witch's broom that she borrows from her witch friends. She's a word nana, he whispered, just like a werewolf. She gives you a big sloppy nana kiss. And instead of turning into a wolf, you turn into a wicked Wernanna, just like her. Of course, Simon had never met Nana Lupin either. But that was not important. What mattered was having fun. Did you take the special potion before you left home? Simon asked, as they turned onto the airport road. I took mine. She can kiss me all she likes. I don't want to meet Nana Lupin, Stella Rosa cried. She's a werewolf in disguise. Don't be silly, Stella Rosa. Who told you that? said her mother. Stella Rosa couldn't help but look at her brother. I never ever called her a werewolf, Simon said. He made a growly wolf face at his sister. I said she's like a werewolf, he whispered. Stella Rosa said nothing. They had arrived. The airport building loomed over her like Dracula's castle, with its control tower turret and its thousand empty eye windows. Looking down on her, Stella Rosa shivered. Not all of those windows are empty, Simon whispered in her sister's ear. Nana's witchy friends are up there. They've been waiting for you. They can smell when you haven't had the potion. They'll be letting Nana know. Stella Rosa shuddered. Once inside the building terminal, Stella Rosa wished she were invisible. She didn't want to meet Nana Lupin, with her hairy chin and her long fingernails and her witch's broom. And Stella Rosa certainly, sorry, definitely, didn't want to be a were Nana herself. Stella Rosa's father raised his arm and waved it high above the crowd. There she was, Nana Lupin, wide in her black wool coat, with a dark scarf tied around her head. She strode towards them. Oh, how Stella Rosa wished she smelt of potion. Why hadn't her mum given her some? Stella Rosa watched as Nana Lupin first kissed Stella Rosa's father, then her mother, and then Simon. There was no one else between Stella Rosa and her Nana. Simon winked at his sister. It was Stella Rosa's turn. 
Nana Lupin sniffed. She's been talking to her witch friends, Simon whispered to Stella Rosa. She's smelling you. She can't wait to kiss you. Nana Lupin reached out for Stella Rosa. No! Screamed Stella Rosa. Stella Rosa, where are your manners? Her mother cried. She's a worm, Nana! Stella Rosa sobbed. Like a werewolf! Her friends are witches, and she has a hairy face and claws on her hands. One kiss, and I'll turn into a worm, Nana, just like her. Suddenly, Stella Rosa gasped. Nana Lupin was peeling off her coat, like a wolf shedding its skin. She took off her scarf and shook out her hair. Oh, Nana, she said, you're lovely. Of course I am, my little one, Nana Lupin said, pulling Stella Rosa into a big hug. And I'm definitely not a were Nana, she said. Wherever did you get that idea? Simon told me. It was just a story, Simon said, smiling wickedly. You should be careful about the stories you tell, Nana Lupin said, turning to Simon. She leaned down to whisper in his ear. After all, she murmured, you were right about my friends being witches. And they save their most horrible spells to use on bad brothers. The were Nana.